Okay, everybody, you made it. Our last video in module 10. What a long module this has been. There has been so many different varieties of problems that we can come across when we're dealing with two populations. This module is a long one and for good reason because a lot of what we're going to be doing in later modules module 11 and then 13 they're going to be building a lot on what we have done in these earlier modules so i hope that you have paid close attention i hope you've learned lots because so much of what we're going to be doing here modules 11 is going to build on this because module 11 we get into looking at tests on variances module 12 is going to be more work on proportions, module 13, multi-population tests on means. It's all going to rely so much on having a good understanding of what we've built in this foundation in module 10. So let's get into our last problem. You guys will be experts in two population testing once you are finished. So Many employers are beginning to recognize the importance of maintaining a happy and healthy workforce. Some employers even provide their workers with arcades and child care facilities, libraries, etc., etc., etc. However, some people argue that these resources are not enjoyed equally by men and women. Therefore, it is important to ensure that the resources being offered are benefiting both genders equally. In order to determine, to ensure that this is true, one employer periodically samples its employees and asks whether or not they're satisfied with their current working environment. Okay, so once again, we're dealing with proportions. And I can see that again by just looking at our data. I have two sample sizes and I have the number of yes responses or the number of responses that again meet some criteria. The criteria here, are you happy? Yes or no? Out of 59 female employees, 51 of them said yes, we're happy. Out of 63 male employees, 48 said yes, we're happy. So those are giving us our proportions, right? So I can just divide one into the other and I have my sample proportions. So I know I'm doing a two population test on proportions. Okay, again, because I'm just going to ignore that. How do I know what kind of test it is? Well, I just need to really carefully read the question. Formulate a test to determine if both genders are equally satisfied with their workplace environment. That's a big giveaway. I see the word equal or equally satisfied. So that's telling me that this must be a two-tailed test. So I can set this up again as P, P1 and P2. And I, I haven't yet defined what which population is one and which is two. I am setting up my test based on the wording, how the problem is stated. Here I see it's a two-tailed test, so that's how I set it up. Now, I have to define my populations. Which one is population one? Which one is population two? For a two-tailed test, it doesn't really matter. Because, again, it's two-tailed. Is Are women equal to men or are men equal to women? My goodness, it's the same problem. So I can just set this up quite arbitrarily as population one and population two. Okay, now here we're getting to the point, draw your conclusion. Well, of course, before I can draw my conclusion, I need my Z statistic, which is going to look something like this. And of course, if you have watched the previous videos, well, you know that I need to calculate this pooled estimator of that common population proportion because again when we perform these tests under the assumption that the null is true unless we have evidence to show otherwise I don't need those subscripts p1 and p2 well under that assumption they're the same so I eliminate that subscript and so our best estimate of this assumed common population proportion P bar is N1, P bar 1, and 2, P bar 2, 
over n1 and n2. So this gives me, let's see, 59, 51 over 59, plus 63, 48 over 63. Of course, I am doing these calculations kind of the long way. You guys don't have to, right? You already know, you've done enough of these exercises that you can probably skip this step because you already know that these all cancel out. So you really, you don't have to write it out like this. And you can just skip ahead and say, well, this is gonna be 51 plus 48 divided by 59 plus 63, right? You don't have to write out all of those intermediate steps. At least my students don't have to. So here I have 51 and 48, oops, 51 plus 48 divided by 59 and 63. So that gives me a pooled estimate of 81. Oh, that's going to round to 812. Okay, so now I can come down here and I'm going to fill in the rest of my Z calculation. 51 out of 59 for the ladies is 0.8. 64 minus for the men, 48 over 63, 0.762. And that standard error, that's going to be that 81.2, 812, one minus. Let me make sure that that's clear. This is 0. 0.812 times 1 over 59 and 1 over 63. Okay, so my numerator, 0 0.864 minus 0 0.762, 10, oh, 2 divided by 0 0.812 times 1 minus 0.812 times 1 over 59 and 1 over 63. And square root all of that, I have 0 0.071. And that gives me a Z 0.102. That gives me a Z of 1.437. One point four four. I guess I need it to two decimals for my Z tables. One point forty four. Okay. You don't even need me for the rest. Now we go to our Z tables. I'm looking for one point four four. Here I have one point. Well, there's the point oh four that I need, and that's going to come down here to the one point four. And so there's that probability, 0 0.0749. I come back up here, and I say my p-value is 0 0.0749. Our level of significance here is alpha 0 0.05. Oh, oh, you say, did I make a mistake? Again, we do so many practice problems that are one tail test because there's lower tail test and there's upper tail test. Don't forget about that one little difference for a two tail test. That one little difference being we must multiply that by two to obtain our p value. And so that gives me a p value of. 1498. Let's just round that to 15. Now, again, luckily for us, that doesn't change our conclusion if we make that mistake, right? Because if I made that mistake and if I accidentally thought that that was my p value, well, with a level of significance of 0.05, our conclusion would be to not reject, right? 
So it's not so bad. Imagine if. What if this had been alpha 0.1? Well, now it makes a big difference. Because now, if I make that mistake on my p-value, and I forget to multiply it by 2, and I compare that against an alpha of 0.1, that's going to lead me to reject. And that, of course, is going to influence my interpretation. Make sure, again, I've said this in so many other videos because it's one of these mistakes that I see my students make often. And it's not, you know, for any lack of understanding. It's because you often get into this routine and you've seen how similar these problems are. And it's so easy to get into a habit. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay, done. Especially on an exam, right? When you've got time constraints and you're kind of freaking out a little bit. You're running out of time. You're watching time. Ah, and I got to go through and do this. Be really careful. Yes, there's a lot of similarities. But these small little mistakes can really make or break a problem for you. Luckily for us, this question had an alpha of 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So if I make that mistake, maybe it's not such a big deal. Maybe I just lose a mark on my p-value. But be careful. In the end, for this problem, our level of significance is 0 0.05. Our p-value is 0.15. We do not reject the null hypothesis. We have insufficient evidence to show that there is a statistically significant difference in the proportion of men and women uh, who are satisfied with their uh, workplace environment. Okay, so again, when, when I'm providing this final conclusion, go, go back to earlier on in this video when I'm formulating my null and alternative hypotheses and, and I give uh, an interpretation, right? When if the evidence supports the null, everybody's happy, equally happy. If the evidence supports the alternative, well, then we have reason to believe that there's a difference in workplace satisfaction. I'm saying that now because part of me is thinking, gee, actually, I might have forgotten to provide that justification on this video, partly because it wasn't required in the problem. So that justification, right? If the evidence supports the null, we have no reason to believe that there's any difference in workplace satisfaction between men and women. If the evidence supports the alternative, now we have evidence to say that there is a difference in the proportion of men and women who are satisfied with their workplace environment. Once we go through all of the testing and we get our conclusion, and now it's time to interpret that, I'm just repeating what I have just said. Right? I repeat what I said when I provided that justification for my test formulation at the start of the problem. It should have been at the start of the problem. We do not reject the null hypotheses. Therefore, we have insufficient evidence to show that there is any difference in workplace satisfaction between men and women. In the proportion of men and women who are satisfied with their workplace environment. Okay, so... I hope that was helpful. Thank you all so much for watching these videos. I hope module 10 helps get you through this segment of your statistics course. Now we can get on with module 11, which is going to be testing uh, both single population um, standard deviation and variances and two population standard deviation and variances. It's like module 9 and 10 all lumped into one as far as single population and two population tests. But thankfully, there's a lot less variation in the types of tests that we'll be looking at. So it actually will be a fairly short module. Okay, thank you all for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.